Okay, this is, uh, I want to demonstrate how the ball interacts with the golf hole to indicate what are good choices for touch. The golf hole is basically four and one quarter inch wide from side to side at its widest diameter. And for a golf ball to go into and stay in the golf hole, it has to sink one half of its diameter before or while it's airborne before it hits the back wall. Once it goes airborne, it has to sink one half of its diameter before it hits the back wall. Otherwise, it will present its bottom curvature to the back lip and will pop out. So this is what it looks like if you can see it from that angle. It has to drop one half of a golf ball before it hits the back rim or more. That's fine. This is the minimum. If it doesn't do that, you're not going to make it. It's going to pop out. It takes the golf ball a certain amount of time to drop one half of its diameter that's set by physics and, and gravity, and it's 0 .07 seconds. If I lifted it a half of a ball and dropped it, it's 0 .07 seconds till it hits the hand. Whether you give that ball that much time depends on two factors. Which path did you choose across the hole? The widest center cut path or one of the shorter paths off to the left or right of center cut? And the second factor is how fast was it going sideways when it went airborne over the lip? Well, even if you take a center cut putt dead straight across the center of the putt, the longest possible path, there is a maximum speed sideways above which it's not possible for the ball to have enough time to drop. Now you can calculate that number exactly in something like 60 inches per um, second in the rolling, which is approximately 11 revolutions. 11 revolutions per second is a very fast roll. So it's possible that something like that could, could literally still go in the hole if it was just perfectly center cut. Okay, that's a lot of roll. If you miss the putt like that, you're, you're long gone. You're five to six to eight feet past the hole. But that, that's not what that's not how the brain picks a touch. So let's talk about the other slower possibilities. Once you slow down to about eight revolutions per second at the front lip right there, sideways across the hole, you've got a fairly good chance of that ball staying in the hole so long as it's a center cut putt. So center cut at eight revolutions per second, that'll work. But that's only a cup that's one dimple wide. Anything left or right of that, and eight's going to be too fast. It's not going to stay in. Okay? Because the hole is just too short across these other paths. But as you slow down, eight to seven revolutions per second at the front lip, the hole will widen about one half of an inch on center for every single revolution that you slow down. Seven is about a half an inch. Six is about one inch wide. Five revolutions per second is one and a half inch wide hole. Four revolutions per second is a two inch wide hole. Three revolutions per second at the front lip is two and a half inches. Two revolutions per second at the front lip is three inches. One revolution per second at the front lip is three and a half inches. And zero plus a little bit is 100% of the hole. So as you slow down, the hole gets wider and wider. Now, that's the physics, and as long as the back of the lip is not tilted up at you or tilted down away from you, that's gonna be exactly what the, what the situation is for all these balls arriving at the hole. The good golfer is the one who successfully adapts to the reality of what's required by physics. Now, what would the golfer need to do? What are the considerations that the golfer would need to take into account when he decides what he's going to choose for his delivery speed? There are three factors. One is what is required to get the ball over the bumps and stuff all the way over here. How much force do you need to keep it rolling fairly straight? The second factor is how wide is the hole once you get here at a certain speed? If you get here too fast, the hole is too narrow. If you get here slow, the hole is wider. The third factor is, if you miss, how far is it going to go past? So we'll call these three things Mr. Comeback, Mr. Hole Width, and Mr. Get It There. And you ask those three to pick between, say, 
one in four revolutions per second. One revolution just dies over the edge. It doesn't really go to the back wall at all. Two at the lip on a dead center line will not go to the back wall either. It will go to the dead center of the bottom of the cup. Three at the lip will die all the way back to the bottom of the, of the cup liner, but it won't really hit the wall too much. And four at the lip will dive all the way down and hit the back of the wall real low. So we're going to pick between one and four, and we're going to ask these three guys to vote. Mr. Comeback says, I want the slowest possible speed, so I'll take one. Mr. Holwitz says, I want the widest possible hole, so I'll take one. Mr. Get It There says, I would like an eight because I don't want to take any chances. And they said, well, we're only picking between one and four. He says, well, I'll take a four. And so Mr. Comeback and Mr. Holwitz say, look, let's just stop both this guy. There's two of us, and we're going to say one. But instead of just shutting him down, let's talk to him and see if we can make sense and make a compromise so we can be unanimous. And so they sit, talk to Mr. Get It There, and they say, can't you be a little more realistic? We've picked one. Can you live with one as well? And he says, well, truth be told, I'm a little bit leery of one with a lip because I'm not sure it would actually get it there. They said, well, why did you say four? He says, I don't know. I've heard that the greens are horrible and you've always got to smash it. He says, well, our experience is the greens are pretty good. Can you live with, with two? He says, well, I'd really like to have three if I could get it, but I'll, I'll settle for two. And so all three of them instinctively decide that two at the lip is a good thing to do. And two at the lip is what golfers would instinctively drive their balls deep into the hole safely to stay there if they didn't get messed up by golf instructors telling them something different. What about 17 inches past the uh, hole? 17 inches past the hole is completely wrong. And the, the data is absolutely not back, that doesn't back that up at all. So that's wrong. Okay. I don't believe that. All right. Um, how far past the, the, uh, the hole a ball would go if you missed is not the way to think about it anyway. But if you have two at the lip, you're going to be safe even at Augusta National on a Sunday. At worst case scenario, you're back down to one at the lip. But you're never going to go lower than one because that just won't get it there. So it's better to think back bottom or bottom than it is to think past. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's a lot better for targeting. It's a lot better for, for, for precision. It's a lot better for positive thinking about making the putt instead of missing the putt. Um, it's just the other way of thinking is completely backwards, so don't try that at all. And nobody actually does that, and no science backs it up. In fact, science proves the otherwise. Okay, so this is actual physics right here, two at the lip. Now, if, if you hit it dead center, two at the lip is not going to make it to the back wall. It's going to go way deep in the cup, all right? So we're not that great, so we're going to miss it a little bit left or right a lot. So how does two at the lip work over here? Well, two at the lip still works fine, 87% out to the edges of the hole. Two at the lip, if you went all the way halfway out to the side, it's still going to go deep in the hole before it hits the back wall. If you came over here on the, on the right side of this cup, inside right at four at the lip, you're going to be hitting dirt instead of the bottom of the cup. That may stay in and may not, depends on how lucky you are. Now, are golfers really that good? I mean, are, can oh, they really control that precision? Oh, sure. Yeah, you can. Uh, every human being has pretty good distance control uh, instinctively and naturally, and it's not really a special golfer thing. It's the same system that you use when you reach out and take hold of a doorknob. When's the last time that you missed the doorknob? So okay, golfers that ball right there arrived at that hole at two at the lip speed. So golfers think they don't have touch, but they do. Oh, absolutely, they do. And in fact, non-golfers can have better touch than golfers because they don't. They haven't been taught otherwise. Golfers are the only ones that are taught that they don't really have touch unless they do something weird. The truth is that all humans that are normal adults have touch coming out of their ears, and golfers could have just as good a touch if they would stop. Could have just as good a touch if they would.